How does it feel knowing you have a Bob Marley collaboration? I felt that I was not worthy to lay my vocals next to the legend. When you first start making music, you don't have a legacy you're protecting. I've been in that state before where you're vulnerable. It's easy to be manipulated. I have strong views on complaining about a contract you signed. In Ghana, like when I say something, it's like the gospel and I have to be very careful. How did lockdown affect you musically? I was so bored I dropped a diss track, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Plus 4 4 podcast. I'm ZZ Mills. Yeah, what's that about? What was that all about? I'm side, man. Davis Music, up. culture, UK. This is Plus 4 4 from Wondering. Wondering. Make some noise in the studio for Sarkode! <laughs> all right. How are you, sir? I'm all right, boss. All is well. Good, good. You're in the UK right now. How many times have you been to the UK? I feel like I'm always here. You know, mm. I come here a lot. This is the first city that I came to when I moved. The first time I flew out of Ghana. And since then, it's been like back to back. So I'm kind of like almost here. You're almost British then? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I have a method um, that I use in order to gauge whether an international artist is going to be truthful with me mm -hmm. by asking them this question. And by the answer to this question, I'll know how honest you're going to be in our conversation. Um, what do you think of the British food? Mm. I can't. I can't live with it. I can't. There you go. So we're going to get honesty <laughs> today. We're going to get truth and honesty. You can take it for a bit. You can't live with it. Mm -hmm. It's something exactly. that... If necessary, yes. to not starve, mm -hmm. it can be consumed. Exactly. But as a as a daily bread, no, it, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't work no. for you. All right. So, uh, jams. The album uh, came out November the eleventh. Now, yes. what what's the psychology behind the name? Um, it's just the, the name speaks for itself. It's jams. It's just beautiful music that you want to like listen to back to back. It's like a playlist. That you don't want to skip any record of it you know mm. i imagine that when i listen to the radio and i hear like a dope dj play back-to-back -back hits so that's where the concept came from so i don't call it even the track list is not track list called a playlist so mm -hmm. it's literally like a, a vibe a good vibe uh, and i normally don't do that i have such records like two or three on every project mm -hmm. and then i do my typical circle the hip-hop mm -hmm. hip life r&b whatever but mm -hmm. then this is dominated by jams like no skips it's all like single worthy type of project you're one of the most successful african artists of all time does it does it feel like that to you i'm i don't i don't look at that but mm. I can understand when someone says that. I don't sit down and, and think about that. Once in a while, you get to realize, okay, it's, it's been a minute. You've been doing it for a while. Um, but I, my relevance is how I feel, you know. But then uh. when people feel like you've been on top for long, I will have to agree because there's a bunch of people I don't think they all met in one room and decided to say that. You know? <laughs> so I, if it's random like that, then there's, just, there's some truth to it. Let's go back to the beginning though. Like what got you into rapping in the first place? It was like a tool for me to express myself. I had a very harsh upbringing, not like in the street or whatever. That's not a story. It's more of, um, it's a story where it's hard for me to like always go back to because the person is still alive and I know it's not their fault. But a lot of kids mm. go through it. Yeah. Um, you live with somebody, you know, you don't have the best circumstances as a, as mm. a child. So it makes you kind of like, um, it's just reality that you thought you know was was what it's supposed to be but it's not yeah so i never spent time with mom and dad it was just with somebody that wasn't like a good experience so that kind of like made me not too sociable but then i needed the two to express myself so i'm into art i sketch i paint mm -hmm. it started with that and then i heard um, of course i love music i knew rap but i was inspired to write when i heard somebody rapping in my native language and that's uh. or brought for just from there i just started Honestly, it started from me writing, like it's like a diary, what I wanted or what happened in the day. So it was not like rap. It was just me pouring out what I felt. And then when I heard of rap for, I felt that was like a great way to communicate how I felt. You know, it's, there's so many interesting things that you said there that um, can be picked out. Uh, one of the things is that I've realized how important for inspiration to be local. Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, you said that it was when you heard somebody rapping in your native language, like... 
you could have heard a Jay-Z rap, you could have heard a whoever rap, mm -hmm. but that's not what reached you. No. It had to be from home exactly. because uh, sometimes even just people will see us as black people and think that we're all monolithic and think mm -hmm. that okay all right you saw a black person doing it somewhere so you should have been able to be inspired by that but sometimes when you're going through especially very specific circumstances that are specific to where you are in the world right now and the circumstances that you're in to see somebody do it that is coming from the same background as you or you share some kind of you know thing with it it, it improves it do you ever think about the fact that you are that person now for other young for people? Other, yes. Yes, I believe that. I think um, for how far I've taken my native tongue and people did not believe in it at that point. And when I came in, I had inspiration by these people that I'm talking about, Reggie Rackstone or Bradford or mm -hmm. Kenya. But they kept it within our circles, mm -hmm. Ghanaians. And um, some of them started like moving forward, but then um i decided i was going to take my native tongue and rap with it and be able to impress even in africa i started from challenging myself in africa and when i did that i started like looking outside so i can see a kid going like if sako did it and then he he didn't rap in english to get there then that means yeah. I'm, I'm good because that's one of the things about your music you've kind of only just been giving us the english bars a little bit, like yeah. like this like it's Amen. more recent you know what i mean like you kind of was like sticking to that thing and i think that's very brave mm -hmm. because initially you could have had the mindset of well i want it to reach as far as it can so let me throw a bit of this in it and throw a bit of that and it's so i found that interesting and there's something else that you've said that i i really find fascinating because i've never heard anybody speak on this perspective but it's a perspective that i know is real you said that it's hard to speak about your you know your upcoming your upbringing because the people are still alive. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a point where I was, you know, I'm doing interviews or I'm talking to people and I'm saying, yeah, man, like grew up in a struggle. I, I, I was, I, it was rough for me. I was in Jamaica and everything like that. And one time I had a conversation with my parents and they was like, yo, we like, we, <laughs> what's up? You, 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 you wet though. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Kind of thing is just like, sometimes when we're talking yes, about the struggle, exactly. it, it can be like mm -hmm. somewhat like a shame for the exactly. for the older generation and i think sometimes we do have to be mindful of how we speak because True. sometimes when you speak about the struggle it can sound like you went without exactly. you know what i mean and especially when people were willing to go without so that you wouldn't go without mm. i think we do have to be careful with that and i think it's interesting that you have that perspective did that perspective come from a similar conversation yes um i think i had to just think about it myself and mm -hmm. feel like and I've the more I'm, I've I've lived, I've gotten to understand life from different perspectives and go like people do stuff and some things were supposed to happen in your own destiny or whatever. Yeah. So it's part of it. And um, some people did not know better. Some people did not really even in the moment they didn't know how intense it was for you. Mm -hmm. Um. So I feel like I was speaking about it, but I was speaking about me, what I went through. But then I imagine myself in the shoes because yeah. I think I'm being a great dad. You never know. Mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. my child is gonna is gonna be the one to tell they, me they'll tell you <laughs> how they're feeling yeah. so when i thought about that i'm like listen yeah that was my um experience but uh, i also as you said have to be very mindful because these people are alive and i don't think they're evil people they're not bad people mm -hmm. it's just maybe some people made some mistakes which i'm also a man it's possible that mm -hmm. you can make it so um, if we have typical evil people of course that's different if they're they're still they still believe in that but i think it's it's only right that you be a bit mindful mm -hmm. yeah just to switch topics a bit how aware are you i know you're in the uk right now how aware are you of the uk music scene i'm an old soul i'm always stuck in time i have to get mm. myself uh, to up to, exactly up to date on what is happening now but i'm i love the uk scene because of gigs you know mm. and I've, i'm still stuck on in that H. era yes it's hard for me to like i don't i know of a lot of people mm -hmm. stormzy yes yeah. i know stormzy and um the most popular <laughs> name <laughs> chipmunk yeah that's my guy as yeah. well so you, you see the names i'm mentioning yeah, like yeah. a lot of so i've not zoomed in into it to be very specific yeah. but i'm still stuck in time you say you are old soul does that affect your music as well because yes. in listening to your music i'm like he's rapping rapping mm -hmm. <laughs> the others are what i'm saying and a lot of people aren't rapping rapping no more because they're either trying to be like for instance you're not trying to go too melodic with the exactly. rapping. I'm, and I'm I'm noticing, it seems like you're just 
this is what I like. Mm -hmm. This is what I think sound good. This is what I'm going to do. How important is that to you? It's very important. You have to be able to, if I'm going to do otherwise, and if I like it, if I get myself to a point where I actually like it, I would do it. But if I don't, I believe that it's very spiritual with music. A lot of songs that I've done that um, I felt a certain type of way about it, mm -hmm. it was received that way. So I'm very mindful on how I feel. Um, yes, and if, if the skill is what I have, and then I actually enjoy what they term as mambo rap and all these things, because mm -hmm. I, I think it's authentic to them. Yeah, yeah, they're not to pretending. Them, yeah. it's, it's, that's how they feel, so it's very real. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling like that, so yeah, I you don't, don't know you're, why. You're, <laughs> exactly. I don't feel like mumbling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I don't feel like getting myself to that space, so I, I stick to what I like. You're still rapping, rapping after all these years of success. Has the process to how you make music changed in terms of, are you still writing a lot? Do you write? Do you think in your head? Like, what's the process? Um, I believe in writing. I think that skill of just recording, I've done that before. Mm -hmm. Successful songs that I did that, mm -hmm. but I don't rely on that. I yeah. believe that I have to read it, sit down. In the beginning, I used to write on a spot and record. Uh, uh, like within five, ten minutes, I should be done with the record. But now it takes me like months, weeks. I need to like take this off. But I think it's just because being in this for a very long time, you catch yourself trying to like, maybe you want to like sound like something mm. you've done before, or you might even say something that you, you've forgotten that you've already yeah, yeah. said. So I take my time a lot because I'm, I'm a true artist. So it was frustrating because I felt, sometimes I feel like you're falling off. That's what you think. Yeah. But then I got to realize it's not that. You care too much about what you're doing. Because mm. in the studio, every every engineer loves everything I do. Mm -hmm. But then I, I have to feel it. Yeah, for you yourself. Know? So yeah. I'm like, nah, I could do better. And I, I think I'm just hard on myself and that's it. But as soon as I'm done with any verse from now, it's still fire. But then I have to give myself time. Do you think you're, you're easier on yourself now than before or harder on yourself Harder now? on myself. Why do you think that is? It's just a lot of work that you're putting in. You don't want to mess it up. You know, yeah. you want to make sure you give people the best. And I've gotten to understand uh, from the consumer perspective that they deserve better. You know, there are certain songs that I did a couple of years back. When I listen to it now, I'm like, could have i could have gone in harder you know i i think it was just in a vibe and i just did it but yeah. now i take my time because for somebody to listen to something for 10 years is not a joke mm. you know for for three minutes for to listen to that thing for 10 years it takes a lot so yeah. you can't play end one with it you have to do the proper nba <laughs> like you have to be in the game and the stunt is not going to work you know for a long term so if yeah. i want and i've seen artists that i look up to who play their records from way back and they're still it still feels like when they made it that inspires me yeah and i start to like dig deep into it how is it possible and i got to realize they actually have time to to make these records when you first start making music you don't have a legacy you're protecting mm -mm. you're building it exactly and now when you make music you're fighting that idea of, oh, he's not what he was. Exactly. He's not what he used to be. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you say that with that level of pressure that you put on yourself now, with that kind of pressure, how does it feel knowing you have a Bob Marley collaboration? Mm. When you get that email, that text or that phone call and they say, listen, it's Bob Marley next, mm -hmm. you know. So step it up is what I did with him. What's that like for you mentally? For what I said about how hard I go on myself, when we had the email or the conversation, I almost passed it on, not just out of respect. Mm. I felt that I was not worthy to lay my vocals next to the legend. I was really hard on myself. And my manager was like, this is a big opportunity. But because the artist side of me is thinking more about the arts, it's not the, the opportunity. So um, I didn't even listen to anything. I just felt I'm not the right person to lay mm. my vocals to the legend. Then uh, they sent the record and we opened his vocals this is his real vocals like mm. when he recorded it and then when i was listening to that in the studio you know i captured it on camera it was like very spiritual at that mm. moment and um i think i did like four verses and i had to choose the the, the right one you know everything i say i'm like oh, I'm, I'm saying something next to bob marley mm. like, <laughs> this is it feels like me yeah. and him in the booth like you can't there are a few people that I feel like that when I work with them. The man that inspired me to rap, or Brafo, mm -hmm. he's a rapper. He's never cursed. He's mm -hmm. never used profanity. Mm -hmm. 
and he was catering to the youth. Mm. I didn't know how he was able to do that. Yeah, I tried it, but you know, <laughs> the, the new generation is hard to like keep it too censored. You want to mm. say stuff that you feel, yeah. but that's what I respect about him. So anytime I'm about to work with him, I sit down to see if every line, if every line is like out of what his brand stands for. Yeah. So that's the same feeling I have with Bob Marley, mm -hmm. the legend. But it's then, like you're entering that person's arena. Exactly. So I have to, and then we all know that at this point it's it's even disrespectful to bring him into my arena though because mm -hmm. the work he's putting in we follow mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he set the pace for what i have to do so the record is not yes i brought it home i seen having my producers from ghana but the message and everything that he stands for i have to make sure that i back it yeah but i, I got away with the song because the song was not one of his um super conscious yeah, type of records, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah this yeah, is yeah. his love so i could yeah. get away with it it's interesting i heard the song and as I'm listening to it, I was like, oh yeah, he put it all on the line. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's something when you listen to the verse and he just literally said to me, yeah, he he made sure he left no no room for no. error. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to I'm gonna give you something that's undeniably exactly. bars. The flow was tight to precision. And I can just imagine what that process must have been like now knowing that you chose out of four verses. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. Because you listen to one one day exactly, and then it's like, that's the one. Mm -hmm. But you listen on the next day and it's like the other. How do you deal with that as an artist, letting the music go and letting the people have it? Um, sometimes it's like very on the spot. So you don't think about it, then it goes out. It's just a vibe. And then certain ones that you're like, oh, this line, there's a line on uh, the new project, but I'm not going to say because I don't, I, <laughs> what I thought people were going to say about it, I haven't heard it yet. So I don't want to bring their minds to it. Yeah, yeah. But I was into like, I was thinking about them like this can cause a lot of controversy uh, this can do this this mm -hmm. can do that and it's because of the weight of who you are especially from where i'm from mm -hmm. at least in ghana like when mm -hmm. i say something it's like a mm -hmm. it's like the gospel in a way to a lot of the youth or, and mm -hmm. even the media so anything i'm saying i have to be very careful mm -hmm. so it's that weight that's the only time that i'm like trying to like sieve it but in yeah, the beginning yeah. it was like you know i'm done just go you know how do you deal with that responsibility knowing that you're you can affect culture in that way it took time for me to accept it because I wanted to, I still believe in creativity, thriving in freedom. I believe in that. But um, I think when you have a responsibility, as much as you want to run away from it, you know, because it's not everybody that has it. You know, there's some certain people who say worse stuff and still get away with mm -hmm, it because mm -hmm. um, probably God did not give that mm -hmm. mantle to them to hold. But I realized that I have that mantle. And as much as I'm trying to act like everybody else, that's not what it is, yeah. you know, so... It's, it's heavy it's a big task but i think if it's if you run away from it it's still going to chase you because yeah. that's who you are you can use it to your advantage sometimes but then sometimes you go with what you're supposed to do you talk about social issues when the people are going through stuff mm. um i speak for artists i'm artist bias anything artists do is right to me because <laughs> <laughs> i feel like for the longest we felt like the media has their own nar narrative of mm -hmm. what my side is and yeah. then we never had like the mouthpiece to speak for us so i always feel like i have that responsibility it's it's heavy but i think naturally i'm that type of a person mm. i'm a family person i like to raise uh children i like to take charge of stuff i like to keep my eye on stuff so i think it comes a bit easy for me how do you balance family and work life when your work will bring you to a, a country hours away it's not really hard because you know when i was waiting to come in here i was even on the phone with my daughter like as the keeping up is like every second so yeah, I don't, technology I don't, has made it easier exactly it yeah. would have been worse if it was like i, I gave birth way back when we you know how it felt like even moving from you've not been to ghana but like a place like accra and tema now it feels close but way back it felt like you were traveling mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so i can imagine mm -hmm. if it was at that time and then imagine how it felt for me in jamaica now truly realizing how tiny Jamaica is is exactly. crazy to me. Uh, yeah. Because I thought Kingston was far. But Kingston is it, I was living in St. Elizabeth. It really isn't. That's like Very a close. tiny journey. <laughs> but at the time it feels so far. So I guess technology does allow us to be True. a lot more connected because if if you can even get on a FaceTime, you can mm -hmm. see your loved ones even even if Real it's time. far away. As you grow as an artist and get bigger, the infrastructure around you is going to grow. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about, you know, you believe in the importance of being free to create. How does having a bigger infrastructure, a bigger 
um, system, more managers, more people looking over you, looking after you and all of that. Does that affect the creative process and how do you mitigate that? Yes, I do have a, a big team, but it's not that much because I'm not like on, you know, there's levels to it. I'm a hands-on person and I feel like you have to always go with what works for you. You have mm. to you have to really listen to yourself. Sometimes you follow what is the pattern, yeah. what you think is the normal. I have not had that. I've had my little crew that I started with, added on a few people. Uh, so it's not really hard to uh, to manage. The structures work for me over the years. And if I feel like I need more, yes, I'm, then I'm going to put yeah. that. But I like to be able to keep my eye on everything and try to be involved i'm not too typical artist that i want to be in the studio and then not read my contracts and all that like you know, <laughs> i read my contracts with my lawyer yeah you know, sometimes i have to point things out to him so i'm really involved so my team is this is quite you know yeah i have strong views on complaining about a contract you signed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. do you know what i mean I it's, it's like you know when you're at your level now it's signing a bad contract would be crazy it's just like I'm, I'm established now. I don't and, and have to. And if you to. sign it, just swallow it. You know? Exactly. Because <laughs> I do think it's bad business to bad mouth anybody that exactly. you work with. Because then somebody that wants to work with you in the future is going to look like, well, if our deal goes sour. This is what's going to happen. I don't want to hear them I talk. Don't, we were talking about this not a few days ago in the car about people complaining about contracts. I'm like, nobody had, unless they had a gun on mm -hmm. your neck, mm -hmm. you have the right. But I don't think that's happening in this day and age. So, no. um, yeah. I get a groundedness from you that even an artist of your stature, it's surprising to me. Where does that come from? Or am I guessing wrong? Are you just being grounded for the camera? Nah. And after that, you're going to tell somebody <laughs> to pass you the tea and crumpets? <laughs> um, I think it's, it's going through life and then understanding. Mm. I came from a place where I didn't imagine this happening. Uh. You know, there was no love. You don't feel like anybody cares. Mm. So when you get to that point where this blessing is coming in you're like listen you know what reality yeah. was in the beginning yeah and what it is now you ain't so, trying to go back to exactly, that exactly you don't want to go back to that so that keeps you grounded and anything else is just to me i feel like it's just happening but it doesn't change anything i don't like um sometimes i take advantage of being famous but i don't mm -hmm. like a lot of things that came with it mm -hmm. um people treat you different people think actually think they want i want to be treated as a star mm -hmm. respect is different mm -hmm. i don't want any extra stuff mm -hmm. I like going to the barber shop. Mm -hmm. I stopped going because I had to skip cues. And anytime I do that and I see people sitting and I skip, mm. it doesn't sit right with me. Yeah, the feeling. Yeah, the yeah. feeling. So I think I think naturally how I am as a person, that's different. And I know life, if you understand life, I think the more you actually understand life, you might even stop talking because it's actually scary. Mm -hmm. You never know the next second. So you can't treat it like you know it all. Like nobody does. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's about to happen in the next two, three minutes. So that's what keeps me grounded not scared i just understand life a bit different mm -hmm. you're very charitable and you know for your sarkozy foundation where does the motivation come from yes i've always had a thing for um, the aged and then children because i feel like i've been in that state before where you're vulnerable it's easy to be manipulated or uh get anything can happen when you're in that state so i feel like i've always felt I imagine if the world could be, everybody could be equal. Everybody, at least, if not, as riches is like, I think it's a choice. People want to have wealth and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. deal with a lot of businesses and be entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and all that. But at not least everybody being every, okay. At least your basics are sorted. Mm -hmm. I wish that could happen. But I think the world is not built like that. And all we have to do is that when you're privileged, you just look back. Mm -hmm. I've been a strong believer of that. And in the beginning, I had a struggle with even setting up the foundation because mm. i had my own theory but then i was wrong because i thought having a camera on you was wrong um mm -hmm. telling people you're doing this is, mm -hmm. is wrong but then i realized no you have been in this position because you attract a lot of people mm -hmm. that the guy in the corner Can't in the attract. community cannot you know i can just tweet and then sort your bill for you within two minutes because i'm just going to say people should contribute mm -hmm. so i'm like okay if that then that makes sense and that's when i set up the the sacred foundation because prior to that i was doing stuff on my own i randomly uh, pick up Instagram and go like on the explore and I see somebody post and I just go and check if it's real. I get my people to go there and check and then I just sort it out. But I'm like, you could do it bigger if you yeah, involve everybody. Scale. Exactly. So I had to snap out of it and just psych my mind, no matter what even people, people are going to say, I just make sure that this is what I want. So I have to make sure that I help. So that's what birthed the foundation. 
Yeah, and there's always going to be somebody in it. Oh, he, he just wants people to think he's a good guy. Exactly. And, and everything like exactly. that. But like you said, there's a benefit to it. You can reach people and you, you, you can use resources and you can even, you just have an ability to galvanize people. Like somebody might not know where the problem is, but you can say the problem's over yeah. there. Let's go. And Let's I'm working go. with a lot of companies mm. with big budget to support. Mm -hmm. And just because I don't want people to say, uh, I'm, I'm doing this mm -hmm. I'm not going to involve and, and have a bigger picture to save a lot of people mm -hmm. no so that's when I took it like very official and then my team set it up and then now we have a structure to mm -hmm. be able to help you do a lot of business outside of music what motivates you to do that and how important do you think that is especially for younger artists to understand that's a personal decision for me because I think as a person um, I freak out when I, when I don't have bread <laughs> I'm like I don't know well. I don't know if everybody is nah, like that but nah, I, nah. I literally freak out like I have panic attacks when that's happening so I'm always like my manager told me that if I didn't do music I was still find a way to survive which is true because I can't um, when I was living with my mom all I was thinking about is having my house right Every, even as, as a little child I still had that so I knew that I, I needed some kind of security mm -hmm. so that's where that came from so in the beginning I focused on music 100% which I think is right people actually mistake that whole thing and go like you know music is not you can't depend on that yeah. you have to find you know there's but, that saying yeah but it's like at first if you're gonna do it you gotta do it properly so what, what my logic was with that is build the brand take your time and build and the brand because I always believe in if something's gonna be successful all the businesses that I know which is super successful they have a long story and when you build that you use that to do any other thing that you want to do mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. every room I'm sitting in I'm sitting in a circle there and I bring in um I'm worth something when I'm having a conversation. So mm -hmm. it's easier for me to get through the door. But if I left it half and half and I didn't mm -hmm. fulfill the side, mm -hmm. then you're not worth the conversation too. Yes. So it was scary because mm -hmm. a lot of business minded people mm -hmm. having conversations with me in a time when I was focused on music and telling me, oh, you know, music is not something you can focus on, come to this side. But I didn't feel like doing it. I really love music and anything you love, you can make money for me. Yeah. There's a lot of things that comes along with the music, not just uh, performing or even streaming there's a lot that comes with it mm -hmm. so that also inspired me to get into other stuff and um, yeah just keep the chain going how did lockdown affect you musically um, funny enough it was a defining moment for me when I respected my job <laughs> people think I don't take they, they said to me I don't take poor people as friends but I'm like no that's not what it is mm -hmm. I just I'm, you don't even have to have a successful business but if you're like a business minded person I love you to enjoy like, talking you. to that person yeah. so luckily I have a lot of like super wealthy people in Ghana who are like friends and when I sit down with them you know their business is like dealing with people direct and they always have cash so when that time came I realized my business was actually not that bad as I thought because this mm -hmm. is the time where uh, it should have took a dip exactly everybody was uh, of course shows and physical contact that was that was locked so that's but then streaming was up because mm. everybody was watching i remember that i dropped i was so bored i dropped a diss track you know <laughs> <laughs> and it did well a lot of people were watching people were yeah. staying home so the numbers were crazy yeah and this is the product that you can't touch mm -hmm. you know is in the air so mm -hmm. You're still making money off it i respected my business ah at that point. so you gained a new respect for exactly. music exactly because it's a product you can buy that you don't have you to don't touch. You don't have to touch. I don't have to do no maintenance, nothing. Mm. So, but then I look at other people where they have to actually be physical. They need workers to come and do mm. whatever. But then I didn't have to do that. All I have to do is just sit in my room, upload and make money. So, That's actually an interesting take that I didn't hear yeah, before. Yeah, I and, learned a lot. And I was, I was stuck in the States. And I keep saying this, I paid all my bills without coming into Ghana and, and trying to like take my savings, you know, and all came from music right so that gave me a different perspective about my business mm -hmm. which after that i started talking to a lot of investors to come into music because people think entertainment is literally entertainment mm -hmm. or we're talking big back um in, in entertainment industry i always like to ask people with money this question because i'm looking for tips and advice how do you tell people no when they ask you for money <laughs> what's your strategy i'll see what i can do <laughs> ah, you leave so it open ended. That, that's the line, you know. I see, tell you, see, see what no, I but do. you you got too much money for that. That wouldn't work on me. If I come and ask you for money, you say you see what you can. Do. No, I can see what you can do. You can do a lot. <laughs> no, but I, I'm very straight with that though. My family keeps telling me that they think um my no is so hard that um yeah. they feel like they feel 
it's like yeah. f- offensive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I like I like a no that makes them think about asking the second when they ask again. Do you know what I mean? It's like this no might last two, three exactly. more times. <laughs> but because um they and it can figure me out because you can ask me for a thousand dollars, I'll say no, and you, you can do like. 15 and i'll say yes and you mm. don't understand why it's because mm. of what you said and what, and what it's going to solve yes that makes sense to me you yes know? but if it doesn't make sense i'm like no and then if i can of course i'm going to tell you i can't do it mm-hmm. it's not and if anybody is mad at you because of that you're not supposed to be there oh there you go mm. sometimes you can tell somebody you can't and they'll never believe that you can't <laughs> yeah so yeah. one one incident happened way back yeah that's me without money mm-hmm. okay yeah i was working a little bit but i, I seen the beginning of my career mm-hmm. and i came home and I literally spent my last money on me. I g- actually gave it out to somebody. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was going to wake up in the morning. You probably go to the bank or something. Mm-hmm. So, bro, I had literally had in Ghana, Ghana CDs, let's say like one pound mm-hmm. yeah. on me. The night is like the day is done. It's, it's mm-hmm. in the night. I'm not mm-hmm. going to do anything. Mm-hmm. Now this guy walks in and asks for 50. 50 pound. 50 pound. Because he said he had to travel mm-hmm. early in the morning. And he's talking to me. There is nothing that I was going to say that he's going to understand. He mm. cannot believe cannot that believe you don't it. have. You are 50 is like, Cody, sir. He feels 50 to me. It's like buying pizza, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, what yeah. is like, yeah. how? Yeah. And today it is not, we're not in talking terms. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So he, he didn't never got over it. And I don't explain nothing to nobody because I don't, yeah. I, I treat things like how I'm going to treat it because yeah. I wouldn't be mad at you if you, if yeah. you say that. So, I think allow people be them, but then you, you, you can't please everybody. That's true. And I always say, don't ask a question that you can't hear no to. <laughs> because if you ask a question you can't hear no to you weren't really asking the question exactly. and you were making demands exactly <laughs> you know what I mean uh, thank you so much thank for this so conversation much, make some noise for Sark Cody <laughs> before I go be sure to check out all the new releases this week across the Plus 44 playlist on Amazon Music as well as the main Plus 44 playlist we also have the R&B playlist the rap playlist and the Afro playlist and make sure you follow us on Instagram at Plus 44 UK, where you can see snippets of this podcast, exclusive content, and stay up to date with all the new music releases. You have been listening to the Plus 44 podcast from Wondery with me, Sideman. Listen to the Plus 44 podcast wherever you get your podcasts or listen early and ad free on Amazon Music. The Plus 44 podcast is produced by So Incredible with Wondery, audio engineered by Nathan Cooper, filmed and edited by Marcus Accent. Photography by Naomi Koji Payton. The podcast is filmed at Fiction Studios. The executive producer for So Incredible was Harry Anthony. The executive producers for Wondery and Amazon Music were Estelle Doyle, Delisa James, Richard Knight, Jessica Radburn and Marshall Louis. Thanks to Sar Cody for joining us this week and thanks to you for listening. Listen to the Plus 44 podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Or listen early and ad-free on Amazon Music.